I wonder though, do pilots really wear these watches? Hi everyone and welcome to Shaluso and welcome to another episode of Watch On My Mind and today we are talking about the Breitling Copilot AVI 765 re-edition. Now first off I want to give a big thanks to Mr. B for providing me with the footage of this beautiful limited edition because I haven't actually gotten my hands on it but it has been on my mind for a little while and I want to tell you guys why. But of course, before we get into that, we have to talk about a little of the history of this. So this is an almost one-to-one -one recreation released in 2020 of a original reference from Breitling from 1953. And when I say this is a proper re-edition, I mean it. They went to every single detail to try and make this as true to the original as possible. The only real differences are the thickness of the watch is 14 millimeters, so a little bit thicker than the original. And unfortunately, they've had to increase the water resistance up to 30 meters. So I'm sure several purists are very disappointed about that detail. But honestly, I think this is a great, great example of one of the best things you can do with watches that you can't do with something like cars because of regulations is you can make such faithful re-editions. When you look at it, they've even gone to the detail of changing the 30 minute register to be a 15 minute register. And the reason why that was a thing was because the maximum amount of time allowed for doing a pre-flight check was supposed to be 15 minutes. And it even has little loom plots along that register so that you could see it in the dark. If you were a pilot in 1953, that would be extremely useful, especially if you're doing something like a nighttime takeoff, you wanna make sure that your pre-flight checks are still being done and you wanna be able to check that they're being done in time. And it's a great example of how pilots and how people would actually use some of these watches for their intended purpose. Obviously these days checks can be automated and there are different timers and all sorts of things that pilots use other than a mechanical watch to actually time these sorts of things today. But it's interesting that they kept that little detail just to make sure they were getting everything as close as possible to the original. And it doesn't hurt also that the original was quite a good looking watch. I love the nice big chunky numerals, the way the dials are arranged in a traditional 369 layout instead of the 1296 layout that we've become accustomed to over the last relatively recent years and decades because of Valjoux 7750 is being used. That's not a case here because on the inside it has the Breitling B09, which is a manual wind version of the Breitling B01, Breitling's in-house caliber. So that means you're still getting a 70 hour power reserve, vertical clutch and a column wheel, and in this case, manually wound. The only unfortunate thing is I wish they took a bit more creative license and gave this a display case back because the B09 without the rotor is actually a very good looking movement. In my view, the rotor was kind of the Achilles heel aesthetically of the B01. So just taking it out, you can really see a lot of the decoration they do below that. Now I should also mention this is a limited edition and I think they've done the numbering quite right if I'm honest. I've always said that when you're doing a limited edition, the max max number should be the year of any commemoration. So in this case, it's 1953 was when the original reference was done. This is a limited edition of 1,953 pieces. I think had they gone more and exceeded 2000, it probably wouldn't feel that special. But that number is close enough that it still feels special, but it's still something you can actually get. And that's reflected in its pricing and pre-owned pricing as well. So in terms of new, if you can still get one, it retails for 8,600 US. On the pre-owned market, it sells between six to 9,000 US. So as far as Breitlings go especially, it's held its value pretty well. And in some cases, there are some that sell for a little bit over retail. But overall, I think what I really love about this watch is just how true it is to the original. The fact that they managed to keep it manual wind at a time when everyone is used to automatics. I think that is a very, very important thing. But they still decided to keep it manual wind, but with their own advanced chronograph that they've been using in-house for quite some time. And I think that's a great mix when it comes to watches. You know, when you can have those nice modern mechanics, but with those old school aesthetics, Relatively old school dimensions as well, being only 41 millimeters. Remember, this is a pilot's watch. Those are usually a bit bigger. So I think it's just a great execution and something that's really tempted me as I look for maybe getting a chronograph as my next watch. As you've probably seen in some of these, I'm thinking, I'm trying between getting a chronograph or replacing my existing GMT. And this is definitely a strong contender for the chronograph. And then also when you think of it in context, there's not that many real true re-editions that are this true to the original. 
and that is still decently accessible. The first one that comes to mind, especially thinking of pilot's watches, is the new 2021 IWC Pilots Chronograph Tribute to 3705. Now that is a tribute to a 1994 version of their ceramic pilot's watch. The new version is in ceritanium, which objectively sounds much cooler. It's got that nice stealth look. It is again a very, very similar recreation of the original. The dimensions are 41 millimeters by 15.3, so it's a bit thicker than the Breitling. And it is limited to only a thousand pieces. However, all that is reflected in the pricing as well because this one is 11,900 at retail. And while it does have an in-house movement, that in-house movement is largely based on a 7750. However, they have modified it to put in their own winding system. They've converted it to a column wheel. It also has some anti-magnetic properties that the Breitling doesn't have, nor does the original 7750. So they've definitely taken some mechanical liberties, but more of that price is going into the material on the outside, as well as the fact that it is a more limited watch. And that reflects in its pre-owned pricing, or granted, it's just been released, but it's still selling for between 16 to 18,000 US on the pre-owned market right now. That'll probably die down as more and more pieces get onto the market, but it shows you the importance, the impact and the demand for some of these glorified nostalgia trips at the end of the day. These are watches that don't really do very much new in terms of design because they're just cherry picking almost one to one their originals from years past, but they're improving them on the inside and making them limited editions. But either way though, I think they're both great watches and the Breitling in particular really, really appeals just because of how they've approached this and because it's so true to Breitling's DNA. At the end of the day, for all that Breitling wants to maybe dispel a bit the notion that it's a pilot's watchmaker, you know, they took away the wings so they could be, you know, land, sea and air, all that shit. But let's be honest, three of their main collections, the Navitimer, the Aviator and the Chronomat all have their roots in pilot's watches. And this is such a true example to the brand to its heritage as a pilot's watchmaker. So I think it's definitely a very good example of it and definitely something tempting. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the Breitling AVI 765? Would you get something like this? Would you prefer to scout out an original vintage version? And what do you think of the idea that they decided to make it manual wind in a time where so many people are still used to just using an automatic? In my view, the 70 hour power reserve more than makes up for it. I tend to change my watches every two or three days anyway. So for me, the notion of winding it after three days is actually pretty normal, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, another big thanks to Mr. B for providing me with some footage of the AVI 765 so that I could show you some visuals instead of just having to take the normal stock footage. So make sure you check out his channel as well. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you like it and share it. If you want to see more pictures and infographics as featured throughout this video and all my others, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And if you want to see more watch videos, Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well so you know when the next video comes out. In any case, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.